Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and I'm standing at the closing lathe, my 12-inch closing lathe, and I've been suffering with a problem with this lathe for some time that's been aggravating me, and uh, that is to do with uh, the Bernard chuck that is on here, and the jaws have become bell-mouthed on this, uh, and I don't know how that happens, uh, but uh, I know that other people have that problem as well. Now, what I mean by bell-mouthed is that the uh, work is actually being uh, gripped farther back, uh, really on the stationary part of the jaws rather than the jaw caps. And because of this, uh, I just get a terrible finish sometimes, and it's especially problematic using a cutoff tool. Looking at this Bernard three jaw chuck from this view. I'm going to show you what I mean by bell mouth. Now this is feeler gauge is uh, two and a half thousandths and the chuck is tightened but watch what I can do with the feeler gauge. I can easily stick it in there uh, on this jaw well it's going in that far on uh, this jaw it's not going in at all that's really the only jaw that is in contact and then the third jaw again um, Oh, approximately an inch. So uh, the jaws are touching uh, the work only back here and in fact if I took these jaw caps off and threw them away I would be just as well uh, as uh, not having them. They're, they're just not functioning at all. However, they, they work great in the reverse position for holding large work. So uh, the only answer here is to throw the chuck away or to grind the chuck jaws and of course I'm going to do the latter. So that's what this video is all about is regrinding the jaws with a tool post grinder. The stock that I was using here uh, for my test is half inch uh, drill rod so it's ground and accurate and, and truly round and uh, I'm going to take that out now but uh, I also checked this with an indicator and there, believe it or not there was very little run out so we'll, we'll do that again later on. But uh, in order to grind the jaws with the tool pulse grinder, uh, you, must, you must load them. That is, we must have uh, pressure against them <coughs> toward, uh, toward the inside as if you were tightening it, not as if you were loosening it. Now I notice that many men in their videos are doing it by just wrapping wire around here or a clamp or something and I guess that is uh, probably okay and maybe I'm making a big fuss over something here that doesn't matter but I think they should be preloaded uh, toward the center that is as if you're tightening rather than uh, loosening them. Now there are many different ways of, uh, of loading these. Some are easy, uh, some are not, but uh, some people put a ring in here and grind half of them, then they move the ring and grind the other half of the jaws. I don't like that method at all. But I'm going to use a method here that I saw Keith Rucker use in one of his videos when he ground uh, jaws, and he gave credit to Keith Fenner for the method. However, maybe it goes way back and, and uh, you know this is a method that's been used for for many many years but uh, I'm going to show you this method because I think it's, it's a pretty neat uh, way to put load on the jaws. I've already removed these two cap screws and I'm removing the third one. I will not touch the outer cap screws that hold the jaw caps on. Now some of you may have three jaw chucks that do not have uh, uh, vice, ca uh, vice caps chuck caps on them. They just have a one-piece jaw so you would have to use a different method but many trucks are made this way so that's how I'm uh, turning my attention uh, uh, to this method. And just using, uh, uh, these are about two inch, uh, three-eighths coarse bolts and they're going to go in those uh, threaded holes and I have found you may have to make one of these rings, but I found one of these in my junk drawer, and you can buy these at the hardware store. And in fact, this is uh, one and three quarters on the inside, and and uh, well, I don't know what it is on the outside. It says ten, but we know it's not ten, and that was forty cents. But anyway, these are available in hardware stores. And what I'm going to do with this is as follows: uh, just to loosen up 
the jaws to the point, and I've already calculated this uh, according to the uh, size of uh, grinding wheel that I'm going to use uh, in my tool post grinder, so this is going to uh, vary, but this is the method I'm using, and I'm bringing these um, bolts up snug just with, just with my fingers to start with, and then I'm going to tighten them more in a moment here, but now I'm able to actually tighten this. I'm going to snug it. It doesn't need a, a whole lot of tightness. And then I'm going to tighten these three bolts and they will do a dual uh, purpose here. One to, to tighten the jaws again, although the jaws are actually pretty tight already from the other cap screws that are in there. And it'll hold the ring in place. Again, this is preloading the jaws, and I'm going to go in here and grind with my internal uh, wheel. And notice that there's just enough clearance here to where I'm not going to strike this ring. So you may have to saw that out or file it or, or make a ring, you know, that is going to serve your purposes. I was lucky to find one off the shelf. So these will be tightened, and the uh, chuck itself will be tightened snug down pretty much. That takes all the slop out of the scroll. The scroll is the spiral type of thread that's on the inside of a three jaw scroll chuck. I know there are some of you out there that are wondering what is he talking about and why is he doing this and makes no sense at all. But here's another chuck off a of South Bend lathe, and boy you can see this isn't in very good condition, but without uh, uh, a load on the jaws that is tightened up against the work, look at the play that you normally have, uh, probably even on a newer scroll chuck. And all the jaws are, are that way on, on all chucks, and that, there's nothing even wrong with that. But if you attempted to, to grind something like this with all of them loose, you can imagine that when the job is done, uh, you, you would probably not have gained anything, and you most certainly would have made it worse than it was to start with. So in review now, I have snugged up the jaws as if I was tightening it around work, around a piece of work, and in fact the work in this case is the ring, and I have tightened these three uh, hex head bolts. Now I am ready to grind, so let's turn our attention to the uh, tool post grinder. I bought this tool post grinder last summer uh, at the same time that I bought my South Bend lathe, my, uh, my 10 inch heavy one, and uh, I'm assuming this is made by South Bend. It looks kind of like the one that's pictured in their book, but there's no marking on it other than it's a GE motor, but you know they could use just about any brand motor on this. But I believe it's a it's a South Bend. First time I've used it, I did have to make a, a T-nut for this that would fit the closing lathe, and the guard is missing. There appears, uh, according to the picture, there should be a guard mounted on uh, the belt here, and that's apparently long gone. But what is unique about this uh, uh, grinder, and I do not like this grinder. I have uh, about three Dumors, and I wish I would have started the job with one of my Dumor grinders. But this uh, spindle has a rotation that is just the opposite of the Dumors. Now, when you use a Dumor grinder, you have to run the uh, chuck in reverse, the lathe in reverse. But I'm thinking that the reason that South Bend did this, this reversing business, is that you can run your lathe in forward. But the problem is it throws the grinding dust up in your face. So when I was dressing the wheel, this was a real mess. And the silly thing is that the grinding dust hovers in the air up here and is drawn into the motor right here and there's dust all over this and I had this whole thing covered with the with the towels when I did that but uh, looking at this from another view now and I believe these motors might have been made specifically for South Bend but the grinding dust is sucked right in here to the fan and you can see all of this and then is exhausted out of here because it must be a sealed motor from here on back to keep that uh, grinding dust out of the 
the windings and all of that but uh, so these are exhaust uh, ports and so there goes the grinding dust now there's so much more grinding dust when you are dressing the wheel and I had to dress that wheel down quite a bit to get it the diameter that I wanted so that it would fit into this ring but that I did off camera and I also built this uh, uh, grinding uh, dresser fixture here I may, had to make a special rigid especially rigid I had a little problem with with vibration there you know where the uh, you'd think the diamond was was real firm and, and sturdy and it wasn't so that's why this looks like it's overbuilt here with inch and a half or inch and three quarter inch stock but that did work fine and the reason I went to all this trouble is I wanted to have this totally separate uh, f normally I put the diamond and here, this is the diamond right here normally you, I put the diamond in the chuck to do that but I did not want to take any of this apart if in case I have to redress the wheel now I may not have to but at this point the wheel is the diameter they want and it's about uh, one and a half inches or, or a little bit less and uh, and is perfectly sharp and ready to go can you see in this close-up here that there's plenty of uh, clearance here between this ring and the jaw itself because I'll only be taking a few thousands off the jaw or the jaws the three jaws and uh, initially there's going to be very little coming off toward the front because most of the grinding will be uh, farther into the chuck and may not even be visible and of course I'm not going to show all of this because it's rather slow and tedious but the next thing I'm going to do is to uh, uh, cover the uh, entire lathe with uh, with towels or rags to try to keep the grinding dust uh, from invading the machine and, and causing later problems and I will do a thorough cleanup of the machine and take the chuck apart after this entire job is completed I hope my wife doesn't watch this video because I've used quite a few of her hand towels here you know to entirely uh, protect the lathe you know clear down to the far end because the dust just goes everywhere but one thing that I have not mentioned is that uh, I was tempted to use one of my so-called die grinder tool post grinders uh, on this but they use this type of wheel uh, that is mounted on a shaft and I have had so much trouble using these they the vibration here uh, and the flexing is just so so tremendous plus this has to go quite a ways in and this would be have to be held way out here where my fingertips are so to me this would be pretty much uh, useless and I'm getting ready to make a, a trial cut but I've also checked the clearance that the wheel will not strike the chuck body when I get uh, much farther in there I've also set uh, the carriage stop so I, I won't go in too far I know uh, uh, I took a trial run on that and one other thing that I want to make a point of is wear a full face shield or a great big mask of some kind when you do this and uh, uh, take very light cuts to start with because it's only going to probably cut on one jaw initially for the first few passes now I can't show all of that but I'm going to show some, uh, some uh, sample uh, parts of what I'm doing here. Perhaps you can see a little of the sparking here as I'm striking one jaw. And remember that uh, this is 400 RPM approximately and that the uh, rotation of the chuck needs to be the opposite rotation of the grinding wheel. I took the first pass and you can see that it, it is starting to clean up. I may put some dye on the jaws so I can, I can tell uh, you know what's been ground and what has not been ground but uh, so far it looks okay and I may use uh, the power feed but it's also important to remember that I'm only going to uh, uh, feed out and of course I have to feed out now not, not in because this is like a boring job boring uh, uh, operation only we're boring with a grinding wheel and I will take probably less than one thousandth off on each pass so it's a rather slow process here remember the jaws are hardened steel they're not uh, soft steel although 
the grinding wheel doesn't know much difference whether it's hard or, or soft. But uh, okay, I'm going to continue with this and uh, see how many passes it's going to take. But I, I will examine the jaws with my little flashlight here after each uh, pass. I've made three or four passes and I'm uh, feeding in all the way to my stop and then I'm advancing the, the wheel a little more into the work and then feeding, uh, in other words, making a cut on the way out as well. And one jaw is pretty well uh, ground but uh, there's one other one that is just barely touched so I'm continuing with this operation. Also remember it's important when you set this up that you get the spindle of the grinder on center with the spindle of the lathe. So in other words it's set on center as a uh, uh, lathe tool is and also that as you s set this up on your compound rest that the spindle here is parallel to the bed of the lathe or you might strike a portion of this shank here uh, as you get in deep because I'm going in uh, uh, a full three inches here advancing a full three inches and I can't even begin to see what I'm doing that's why I'm, I'm not showing a whole lot of this on camera because I can't see uh, what's going on and I know that you at home will not be able to see what's going on because we're working into the bowels of the chuck I'm making a little progress I've uh, taken off about six thousandths all together and two of the jaws are cleaned up real nicely but the third one needs quite a bit taken off yet now we'll take a gander at it from this view and I've been feeding by hand rather than using the power feed it's been quite satisfactory Not a whole lot of swarf compared to when I was dressing the wheel. And this is it. This is the final pass. And it's cleaned up pretty well. There are some chips on the very uh, outside of the of the jaws, uh, or you know, toward the tailstock. Uh, I don't know how the jaws became slightly chipped, but I'm not going to attempt to totally remove those or I would be taking off too much. So now I'm going to remove the ring here, uh, back the grinder up, and we'll take a look at these jaws. Now this jaw has just a little bit of a, you know, pitting here that I said a moment ago. Uh, this one also just a little spot there but that isn't going to hurt a thing because they really cleaned up all the way back and then uh, this one was probably the jaw that had the most removed from it but it is totally cleaned up and looks real actually great quite a bit of swarf and dirt on the inside of the, of the chuck so that's got to be cleaned thoroughly and I know some of that got down into the scroll so this uh, chuck needs to be totally disassembled and washed with uh, uh, thinner. I have replaced the other cap screws and tightened them down real well. And you know this internal deep grinding is uh, much akin to doing a tonsillectomy through the rectum. You know that's how they had to do them in Russia uh, during the Stalin regime. At least that's what my dad told me. This is the half inch drill rod I installed back in the chuck and this is a one thousandth uh, feeler gauge and I went all the way around or all three jaws and, and it will not fit in so uh, that is corrected. Now I put the uh, indicator up against the work and I'm going to rotate it. 
I zeroed this out and I've got about one and a half or so thousands uh, run out. And why isn't it perfect? Well, that's a good question, but I'm sure that there is wear on the scroll and that uh, I'll get different readings on different diameters of stock because this is still an old chuck, 35 years old. So uh, often chucks are only within a thousandth or so when they're brand new or quickly revert to, you know, two, three, four thousandths off. So. Uh, if you want real accurate work, generally we have to use a, a four-jaw chuck anyway, but uh, I'm a little disappointed that that isn't closer to a zero run out there, but I'm very satisfied with the fact that I've eliminated the bell mouthing, and that really was the goal of, of this job, was, was uh, to remove the bell mouthing, and I did do that. And what causes bell mouthing? I'm not real sure, because it's not necessarily where because I even checked these jaws with a square, but uh, I think it's probably a chuck abuse at some point where somebody used cheater bars on it over the years, or, or the, the milled slots here are, are worn, and uh, just an accumulation of, of uh, problems in an old chuck. So uh, that's how you do this. Uh, it's a kind of a dangerous operation. Be careful when you do this. I wore my big face shield at all times, and uh, uh, you need all of this special equipment, but I hope you found this video to be of some interest. Uh, well, this job is about done, and here's what I'm, I'm going to do next. First of all, I'm going to take all these towels and shake them out real good outdoors, and then I'm going to put them, I'm going to sneak them into the uh, hamper so they get washed and, uh, and reused. Uh, I, I think they're okay because most of the swarf was produced during that earlier session when I did the uh, dressing of the wheel. Then I will take uh, the grinder off. I'm going to take it outside into the driveway and blow it off real well because it was dirty before I even started. So I'm going to get all of that uh, dust off of there. And the only part of the lathe that is really contaminated right now is the compound area. So I'm taking the compound off and uh, cleaning that real well. and. Uh, uh, wiping it and oiling it and getting all that grit. There's an awful lot of grit on there and that, that's the, the part that needs uh, cleaning and I see a little bit here that spills so I'll take care of that. And then I'm going to take the chuck off and the next video will be at the bench and I'm going to take this scroll chuck apart for those of you that have never seen a, a scroll chuck disassembled and I'm going to get all of that uh, grit out of there. Now I had uh, put a rag back into the spindle to keep any dust from getting in there so I have already pushed that out and uh, kind of formed a dam in there is what I did. And uh, any other dust around here will be removed and then uh, re-oiled because I don't do a whole lot of grinding but after the process uh, sometimes you need to spend a half hour 45 minutes uh, doing that cleaning it's really a necessary step unless you have one old lay that is dedicated to grinding and you don't much worry about it and that concludes this chapter on uh, reconditioning the jaws of a three jaw chuck using the tool post grinder method. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.